back. Uh, well, uh, not much to update on the markets. Uh, pretty flat at this point in time. So let's concentrate on the government's affordable housing scheme, which is seen as a means to trigger a growth in the economy. The affordable housing scheme basically says that uh, there could be a 4% subvention for lower ticket loans and a 3% subvention for uh, slightly higher ticket loans. But the overall area is going to be 220 square meters. But uh, let's get it from the National Housing Bank uh, MD and CEO as to what can be the ramifications of the scheme. Mr. Sriram Kalyanaraman joins us. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Sriram. Uh, if you can first tell us how the scheme will operate as soon as a housing finance company, and I think this time banks and HFCs are included, if they get someone who qualifies for it, they come to you for permission or can they straight away uh, give them uh, the loan and take the money from you? Yeah. Thanks, Lada. Good morning. Uh, see, when you, there was already a scheme running, mm. which was CLSS for the EWS and LIG, which was giving a 6.5% sub subvention mm. up to income levels of 3 lakhs and 6 lakhs, respectively. Mm. Now, what the government has done is to extend the scheme to the middle class mm. and probably increase the area to 90 and 110 square meters. Okay. Um, clearly on the MIG front with the income of 12 lakhs and 18 lakhs. Mm. Now at 12 lakhs if you see an individual would be eligible very normally given a multiplier of 3 mm. uh, would be eligible for 36 to 38 lakhs mm. and at 18 you would be eligible for 50 to 54 lakhs. Mm. So we would call it historic because probably for the first time anywhere the middle class has been roped in for a subsidy of 4% and 3% up to loan amounts of 9 and 12 lakhs respectively. One, the way even the earlier scheme is working is nobody need to approach NHB. Mm. They will approach the banks. The banks will determine the eligibility, give them the loan, take their full EMI and send us the details of the individual and we would disburse it. Now, instead of going Excel sheets going up and down, we had created a complete portal where they upload and we started with 10 to 12 days to disperse the subsidy. And the last few months, we have reached the goal of four to five days on disposing the subsidy. In fact, I'm quite happy to say on the recent uh, Digital India Awards, our portal won the award for digital in innovation. So things are working quite smoothly. The checks or the audits, as we call it, we would do it uh, after the disbursements. Because essentially we are dealing with the regulated entities. Mm. And in both these schemes, CLSS 1 as we would like to call it and CLSS 2, both housing finance companies and banks were an integral part of it and would continue to be so. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shiram, good morning. It's good to hear the positives about this scheme. But the only problem that everyone is talking about is government funding, right? Because uh, the in the budget in FY18, the government has allocated about 1,000 crores for this scheme. But we all know that the government will need a lot more in order to get this scheme going uh, uh, in, in, its, uh, sort of in its entirety. Um, what have you made of that and how much more money do you think the government would need and how would they raise this? Yeah, it depends on how it takes off. As of now, if you see in the segment, we could look at a much, much higher amount definitely. But why are we worried about it when the government has not said they will curtail it at 1,000 mm. crores? It's an immediate budgetary allocation. If you see CLS is one, for example, we have now disbursed 520 crores and odd of subsidy and the initial allocation was if I remember 75 crores or uh, 50 crores or whatever it is. Mm. So the point is the government is committed to housing for all and as the players, the financial intermediaries, the institutions get their act together and starts disposing, I am sure the money will flow. But we are putting a little the, horse, uh, the cart before the horse by saying, no, there won't be budget reallocation. You know what is allocated. Let's exhaust it or let's near exhaustion and then go back to the government. Yeah. Take your point, Mr. Uh, uh, Sriram. Uh, I, I just wanted to know, again, more procedural questions. See, annual income up to 12 lakhs uh, and 18 lakhs, and it should be the first time they are buying a house uh, uh, for the family itself. It should be the first house. Uh, how do all these checks happen? Uh, are banks... Uh, 
qualified to make all these checks? Is it largely self-certification by the borrower? Exactly. The way even the CLS is one is done, it is a self-certification. But remember, in all the today, there is an entity called Credit Bureau. Okay, if at 12 lakhs or 18 lakhs or even at 6 lakhs, if we are uh, buying a house, it's almost taken for granted you would have borrowed some money from a financial institution because it's very unlikely you would have so much of resources that you would have got an earlier house. So the point is credit bureau will be a secondary check because credit bureau will show you if we had borrowed it and to a self-declaration and if people commit uh, or a wrong declaration it will become a prejury automatically. Okay. So I think it, the, the balance is between striking, uh, keeping it simple and going forward or doing a lot of checks by which time the customer will lose interest on it. Okay. Our goal is to give the subsidy before the first EMI hits his account and that's what we have been doing so far. So you provide the entire subsidy before the first EMI. So he makes a substantial amount of money. Yeah, yeah. What, actually, happens, what happens if he exactly. stops paying and becomes a defaulter? Uh, there is a mechanism in the uh, there is a mechanism in the rules to how do we share it when the banks recover it. So that is part of the uh, uh, what we call as the guidelines which we had given. So there will be a proportionate sharing part when the banks recover that money because it's a secured asset at the end of the day. Okay. okay, just one final question. What kind of opportunity does this create to make a larger proportion of uh, the population eligible under this scheme? I think it's a huge because as we see it now, if you see the uh, 30 to 50 lakhs as I call it is always the sweet spot on the, um, uh, on the loan amount for most of the financial institutions. To don't look at it in isolation. I'd say if you go to the finance bill, the affordable housing status has been given. Builders have been exempted from income tax for the affordable houses. The infrastructure status has been given for the affordable houses. Rental, uh, deemed rental income um, has been given. And capital gains um, liability in respect of land and this one has been granted. Along with that, now with the both the EWS LIG and the middle income roping in to take more loans will give a tremendous boost to the segment. So the estimators, I could even see it that it might go up to probably about in next six months about a lack of houses on the uh, uh, um, on this subsidy on MIG. And that is how much in terms of money? Uh, one lakh houses would be in, in terms of thousand crores. How much? Uh, roughly taking about uh, two thousand per house. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, the one year. Yeah, that looks like a lot of money. Thank you very much. But let's see. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, sorry, I'm sure, I'm sure as it takes off, there will be, or government will make available, going by the CLS, uh, the mm -hmm. enough budgetary amounts, going mm -hmm. by the CLS is one example. Yes.